Hello and welcome to the Gospel Truth. We appreciate you watching. As you can see, I am uh, flying solo tonight. The topic tonight is, you know, it's, it's getting out there and we're going to talk about um, the dimensions that we live in, right? So we live in a spirit world and we are immortal spirit beings. The spirit world that we live in, because we are immortal spirit beings, but we live inside of a, um, a, a three-dimensional body, uh, height, depth, and width, and depth, right? Those are the three dimensions that our bodies live in. And then the fourth dimension comes from uh, Einstein's theory of rel relativity, which is the dimension of time, right? So we live in a linear time frame. Because we live in these, three, these four dimensions, we, we live in a linear time frame. Scientists will actually tell you that there are up to 10 dimensions, which would make complete sense because the number 10 in the Bible is the number of divine completeness, the number of divine order. That's where you get the Ten Commandments from in the Old Testament. We don't live under the Ten Commandments today, but that's where you get the Ten Commandments. They, they were a, they were a, the, the number 10 was significant in the Ten Commandments. It was a, the number of divine completeness, right? It covered everything. Any, any sin that you, you could think of, those 10 covered. So <clears throat> we, scientists will tell you that we live in 10 dimensions. Obviously, we know about the four that we live in, length, breadth, and height. Length, width, and height. Actually, uh, it was the Apostle Paul. You think about the theater, theory of relativity was, is probably 100 years old or so. Um, the string theory is, is uh, newer than that. String theory is where scientists have posited that there are 10 dimensions. And um, it's, it's more recent than the theory of relativity. The theory of everything was what Einstein was working on when he died. He, he had published the theory of relativity, and, which labeled the fourth dimension of time, and that's where we get that, right? It's been basically proven to be true, the theory of relativity. Theory of everything of what scientists are building upon his work. Okay, so we live in inside of these ten dimensions, but we only see four of them, right? We see time, we see breadth. Uh, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter three, verse eighteen says, and I'll start with verse sixteen. He says, "May he grant you, out of the riches of his glory, to be strengthened and spiritually energized." with power through His Spirit in your inner self. Okay, So he's talking about your spirit man. That's what we are. We are immortal spirit beings who reside inside of a mortal body. Right? The Bible says that though the body is decaying, the spirit man is renewed day by day. So though the outward man is what the Bible calls it, though the outward man decays or is you know, gets older and, and uh, fades, the spirit man is renewed day by day. So your spirit man, when you get to heaven, if you're in your 60s, 70s, 80s, 40s, uh, you know, if you're an older person, when you get to heaven, you will look as if you are young, right? Probably somewhere in your 20s to 30s. Because your spirit man is renewed day by day. You're, it's only the outward man that decays. But... So, may He grant you out of the riches of His glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through His Spirit in your inner self, indwelling your innermost being and personality. And we'll get to the personality part in a minute. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through the faith, through your faith, and may you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable of comprehending with all saints... God's people, the width, the length, the height, and the depth of His love. Fully experiencing that amazing, endless love. So that's what the, the, the three dimensions are length, depth, and height. Not width. Three dimensions are length, depth, and height. And, the, and then Paul, 1,500 years ago, which would have been 1,400 years before Einstein's theory of relativity added a fourth dimension in here. So he knew some things that we didn't know for 1,500 years. Just think about that. 
Paul wrote this 1,500 years ago. He added a fourth dimension in there that wasn't time, right? So we know about time now. So we know that there are other dimensions. And a dimension is simply a facet of, of our reality. It's what we're able to see and feel and comprehend. It's just that they're, they're facets of reality. I'm not talking about... Uh, you know, like a comic book, multiple dimensions or multiple realities. I'm not talking about that. Although these scientists do say that once you get that far into the 10th dimension, you, you are fully aware of everything and fully, it's, it's a fascinating look. Go go, just go Google scientists, 10 dimensions and start reading about what they say right? They, they cannot see them, but they know that they're there mathematically. Right? There, there are things that scientists know are there because they can, they, can, um, they can calculate the math on them inside the earth, but they can't actually see it. And so <clears throat> that's how you know that God is real, right? So one of the things I'm most fascinated with is whenever you see Whenever you, you take the Bible and start to explain science, things that scientists, very smart people, have known forever. Uh, I don't ever want to down science. I, I, wanna, I want to uh, curb the scientific thought because, in my opinion, the scientific thought too oftentimes is trying to prove that God doesn't exist and that we're, we're, we were created by a higher life form, some alien life form, or whether we, uh, you know, arrived by the Big Bang theory, <clears throat> and that we that chaos um, came, that order arrived from chaos. I don't believe any of that, right? But the Bible does speak very plainly about things that scientists are just now discovering. So they say that when you get to the fifth and when you master the fifth and sixth dimensions. Right. So whenever you get inside of five and six, we like like I said, we see four when you get inside of five and six that you can actually travel through time. OK. Dimension seven through nine, if we had access to dimensions and by the way, scientists are working on time travel right now. OK. Dimensions seven through nine are you get into multiple dimensions and multiple universes with different beginnings and different endings. OK. And it is the 10th dimension that they say is where you have full knowledge of everything that ever happened, ever existed, and ever will exist. You, you, you have unlimited knowledge. Okay? That's where we will be when, when this body is shed, when we are raptured and we're in heaven. We'll have full knowledge of everything. Okay? So, I, I said all that to say that we are a spirit being. And we live in a spirit world, okay? Are there, are there areas in the Bible that talk about multiple dimensions? The answer is yes, okay? Uh, Philip was translated in the book of Acts, right? That's time travel, right? So Philip, uh, at, it, in, it, anytime we transcend on this earth, anytime we transcend that fourth dimension, the dimension of time, the, the dimensions that we are limited to. Anytime we transcend, it's as God wills. It's as the Holy Ghost wills. Philip was translated. Peter walked on water. Uh, Jesus, in, in his resurrected body, walked through walls. Um, if you remember back in the Old Testament, the prophet Elijah, when the, when the children of Israel were going to war, I think it was Elijah, Elisha, Elijah, I believe it was Elijah, when the children of Israel were going to war, uh, he prayed that the Lord opened the eyes of his assistant because they were, they were clearly outnumbered. And Elijah was calm and the assistant was asking, how are you so calm? And he asked the Lord to open his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, he saw chariots of fire, horses in, in uh, the heavens, right? So as Paul talks about, I believe it was Paul himself, but what he says is in Corinthians that I knew a man who was caught up into the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, right? So there are, the important part there is there are three heavens. So there are three heavens. Our, our atmosphere in earth is 
the first heaven, the stars, the moon, the sun, that's the second heaven. Then the third heaven is where the throne room of God, God is. Promotion comes from the north. So <clears throat> all this is there now, right? <laughs> around you today. That's what's out there. That's the world you live in that you just can't see. That's the important part of what I want you to get tonight. It is it is that you live in that world, whether you recognize it or not, that's the world you live in. You live in a spirit world and you are a spirit being. So w- whenever you are believing God for things, it's that, it's, it's that realization that you need to come to, to realize that you are, you're, it's not you in your body that decays, that is trying to get something. It's your spirit man who has access to everything that you have to tap into by faith. God gave us faith as the currency of that world. You have to believe it by faith. You have to believe in Him by faith. So whether you believe it or not, it's reality, right? And as we said, the the different dimensions are just different facets of reality. Once you get, once you, if you had access to the fifth dimension only, right? You've got access to four. Once you had access to the fifth only, then it would be, the world would look completely different to you. This earth and, and your surroundings would look completely different, right? Just one step up. When, when I, in actuality, there are 10, okay? So, <clears throat> the reason I wanted to talk about this tonight was because I want to talk about how the enemy attacks us, okay? He attacks us from a dimension that we cannot see. He's there, and his, uh, the the Bible either calls them devils, demons, or unclean spirits. You you can go to um, the the first verse of the fifth chapter of Mark. And they came over into the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, talking about Jesus, immediately, the, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with, with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with, fetter, with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones." So he had a mental problem. Seemingly, he to an outside person, he had a mental problem. Okay. Again, we're talking about how the enemy attacks us. He attacks us from a realm we cannot see. And so we immediately write off certain things as normal or, um, or um, you know, just things that happen because we live here. When in actuality, uh, it, it is the, the enemy behind it, okay? And always night and, the, night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. And the first thing Jesus says to him is, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Okay? Jesus, Jesus had the spirit without measure. Okay? This is where the Spirit of God can help you in this life recognize that you live outside of just the dimensions of of the reality that you see. Okay, Dimensions, again, are just facets of reality that we see, facets of our reality. Your reality is not what you think it is. 
Because you live in a spirit world with multiple dimensions, but you only see three, four of them. Okay, Jesus had the spirit without measure. He lived on earth as a man, but he had the spirit without measure. He recognized immediately that this man was not just mentally challenged, he was demon-possessed. Okay, So the devil comes in many forms. You could go full possession, which is, you know, you, you can go, you know, movies like The Exorcist. This, the reason that I don't watch uh, spiritually charged movies like The Exorcist is because they're real. <laughs> those, those stories are true stories. You don't need to fill your mind with things like that. You, you, you invite more into your life than you should, okay? That's just my stump speech. Uh, but movies like The Exorcist, demon possession is real. We don't see a lot of it in America because there's more members of the body of Christ in America than any other nation. Okay, America's still a Christian nation however you want to slice and dice it. Um, but Jesus recognized immediately that the man wasn't mentally challenged because Jesus was dealing in the spirit world. He's not dealing in this natural world. You go follow Jesus' ministry, and when he would deal with the natural, right? So the, so the, the enemy can come. There, there, are, uh, there were healings in Jesus' ministry where Jesus, th there was a man blind from birth. That's not a demon. That guy was blind from the time he was born, but Jesus still healed him. Um, there was, uh, when he, when the centurion came to him and while he's ministering to the centurion and telling him that he's not found, uh, that great a faith anywhere in Israel, um, there's a man named Jairus who comes to him and Jairus's assistant says, no need to bother Jesus here. Your daughter's already dead. And Jesus turns to Jairus and says, be not afraid, only believe. That's not, that there was not a demon present. It was a natural thing that happened. His daughter died. And yet his faith, Jairus' faith, not Jesus' faith. J Jesus turned to Jairus and said, be not afraid, only believe. These are lessons for us today. Okay. Be not afraid, only believe. And that man, by the time Jesus got to Jairus' daughter, he said, she's not, she's not dead. She's only sleeping. Okay, That's Jairus' belief. The, the man who was blind from birth, Jesus spit in the clay, rubbed it in his eyes, and said, now go wash in the pool of Siloam. It was his faith that took him. It was the act of obedience and the faith coupled with it that took him to the pool of Siloam to wash his eyes out that restored the man's eyesight. It wasn't Jesus. It was his faith. If that man had, had uh, on the way to the pool of Siloam, decided that this is stupid, that God just spit in the ground and rubbed dirt in my eyes, this is dumb. I've been blind my whole life. If he had not done that, he would, be, he would have been blind to the day he died. And yet... He, that the act of obedience, the faith that he put in that act of obedience is what healed him. The woman with the issue of blood. Jesus said to her, uh, Ought not this woman whom Satan has bound? Okay? That is not a natural thing, seemingly. Okay? Now, she had a, uh, it was the woman with the issue of blood. So she had. She had a blood condition that could have seemed natural, but she, but Satan had done that to her, according to Jesus. Ought not this woman whom Satan has bound? And then he turned to her after she touched his clothes. He, Jesus felt the power go out of him and said, Who touched me? And they brought the woman to her, and he looked at her and said, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. It was her faith in Jesus. We have to have that same faith today. Now, there are, you've got the madman of Gadara who was demon-possessed. Then you've got the little boy who was, throwing him, who was having seizures and throwing himself in the fire. And they cast the devil out of that kid. So, there, so there are, there's multiple things. that There are natural sicknesses and there are spiritual sicknesses.
Spiritual sicknesses, natural means can do nothing for. That's Spiritual sicknesses are the result of unclean spirits, not possession, right? I'm not talking about full possession. That's, that's crazy town, okay? But they're uh, oppression, depression, sickness, disease. Um, it, it, the, the devil can manifest himself in many ways outside of a demon possession. We, we very rarely see demon possession, right? Most of it, that's where a demon is, it has fully taken over. See, see, unclean spirits look to inhabit bodies, right? They have their widest range of influence over human bodies. But the madman of Gadara, the spirits spoke to Jesus and said, uh, don't cast, cast us into that herd of swine. They, all they wanted was a body to inhabit, okay? Now, <clears throat> so, um, so there are natural sicknesses and there are spiritual sicknesses that natural means can do nothing for. Those are the ones who, you know, you may... Um, what had happened was that the, the woman with the issue of blood had spent every dime she had and almost lost it all. Okay, Natural means, natural medicine could do nothing for her. It was, it was a spiritual thing. The little boy who would uh, have a seizure and throw himself in the fire, natural means did nothing for him. Right? It was a devil that's just present. Okay? It, uh, devils cannot attack your spirit. They can attack your body and your mind. It's exactly why you renew your mind with the word. Okay? So, so what do we have that gives us, uh, number one, um, we have power over him. John 10.10 10 says the thief cometh not, but for to kill, steal, and destroy. In other words, the only reason the thief comes is to steal from you, to kill you, and destroy you. But Jesus said, but I have come, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So if you couldn't have life and have it more abundantly, why would Jesus say that? You can. How do we do that? How do we have life and have it more abundantly? And defeat the enemy at every turn. The answer is in Ephesians 6, 12, and 13. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand Verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, having uh, the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. That's one of the ways to pray. Uh, the prayer of supplication, praying always with all prayer and supplication and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplications for the saints. That's how we defeat the, the enemy. We have to have the whole armor of God, the whole thing. Most of us, myself included, takes about half of it. We got the, the helmet of salvation. And uh, where, where, where most of us fall, including myself, is the part that he says is the most important. And the most important, above all, taking with you the shield of faith, where you quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. So if there's a subject that you should major on in the Bible, it is faith. And faith starts with faith. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, we having the same spirit of faith uh, that, that God did when he framed the world. We believe and therefore we speak. That's what faith is. It's belief in your heart and, se- and uh, speaking from your mouth that uh, whatever you want to come to pass can come to pass. And remember, you don't live 
in the reality that you think you live in. You live in a multiple, a multi-dimensional uh, world. You just happen to only see four of them, okay? But your spirit man, the real you, the you inside of you, when you die, your body is inanimate. It's your spirit and your soul that give your body personality, okay? And the spirit and the soul are different things. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword dividing the soul and the spirit. Your soul and your spirit are two different things. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. It's what gives your body personality. It's tied. Your soul is tied to your spirit, but it gives your body personality. When you die, your soul and your spirit leave your, leave your body, and your body is inanimate. Okay? So <clears throat> that's why it's important to understand the enemy's always trying to get to, to get you to live in the soul world. That's the world you feel. That's the world you touch. That's the world you see. Those are your five senses. That's the world he wants you to live in. God is trying to get you to rise up and live in the spirit world that you actually live in and that you live inside of 10 dimensions. You live beyond, your spirit does. You live beyond what you can see and feel and touch. And, and uh, you, you live beyond this, right? It's the, it's the idea, but how do you get beyond it? Believing, believing and saying. And belief comes from knowledge. So I hope that this, uh, that this speaks to you tonight. So thank you for watching. We appreciate it. As always, uh, leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.